Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. This is episode number four. I'm Robert from the U.S., and with us we have Lionel from Canada. What's up, Lionel? Well, what's up is uh, I still have the hoarse voice as I'm still not quite even in recovery mode of what's going on with me, but nonetheless, I just sound like one of them gruffly old guys, so that's okay. But uh, briefly, before we get into what we're going to be doing today, if anybody notices that you also have a bit of a hoarse voice today, uh, you can tell them really briefly why you do. And I think it's pretty good news for anybody uh, who lives yes, in the same yes. area that you do. Well, I call this hockey horse because I've been screaming last night for the eight goals my team scored against um, <laughs> our opposing team, which Thankfully, was not mine. San Jose Sharks. Yeah, well, no offense to anyone living in San Jose or California <laughs> at all, uh, but uh, the um, the Preds, uh, they were phenomenal last night. They really were. Uh, and I know you don't believe that, Robert. But, they were, they were, uh, they were phenomenal the second half. They the were. First half, okay, I fair enough. Them, I was fair telling enough. them how bad they were doing. Yeah, I guess I guess the, the point is, is uh, yeah, people have noticed is that you were actually at the game. You weren't just watching on TV. I can get I can get hockey horse from screaming at TV, no problem, because I don't live <laughs> in Winnipeg and the Jets are my team. But yes, I was uh, you, when you're actually at the game, that's a totally different kind of hockey horse. Totally yeah, I, I, I and I'm a very emotional <laughs> uh, participant, and I tend to be very boisterous and loud. And I, the whole first half of the game, I was screaming at them to get their together (laughs) and then they did and so then i take full responsibility for the recovery i do because they must have heard me screaming from the raptors that's gotta be it that's gotta be it anyways with that said uh i do think interestingly we 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 could go on for quite a bit in a future episode about sports in canada and the united states and some of the connections people don't even realize are there when they don't think they are. Um, there's a whole lot of things. We can get into that another time. For today, uh, we, we actually, I'm looking at the wrong list. So excuse me while I move over. First thing I, we want to talk about is some misconceptions that Americans get about how Canadians talk, certain expressions they use, mostly in the pronunciation, well, partly in pronunciation. But a lot of that misconception is coming from Canadians and it isn't always comedians making fun of ourselves. When it is, that's fine. So when you see comedians getting out there and saying, yeah, we're going to go to the store and we're going to, it's going to be snowing a lot. We're going to get into a boot. Hey, you talk a boot, a lot of things over there, eh? Uh, it's fine. Because they're being funny. And I don't even do the accent very well, and I'm Canadian. Um, in any case, um, that said, uh, there, there are other times where Canadians will come out in all seriousness, at least they're trying to be serious, on YouTube and give you a guide to what Canadians are supposed to actually sound like and not what Americans think we sound like. Um, like a video I saw where they said, uh, we don't say a boot, like a, a boot on your foot, but a boat, like a boat on the water. We don't. We don't say a boat. We say about, just like 90% of Americans. And I say 90% because there are accents here and there where it might change a little bit. Um, And and once again, I can get into Minnesota where they actually do say a little bit of a boot. They'll actually say, we've got to go to the store. Uh, I was thinking that maybe we could talk about what you want. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Not to be confused with Wisconsin, which is Uh, not too far away, but it's it's still that Midwestern, but they talk a little different up there in Wisconsin, right? Mm, Yes, (laughs) yes. We have family in Wisconsin, so we go there often, and yeah, some some people have super strong accent. Now, I I try to shoot down the misconception that Canadians are always saying "a." Unfortunately, virtually every American that I know tells me that I just finished saying it a couple of seconds ago, and I'm like, "What? Did I really?" And they go, "Yeah, you don't even know you're saying it." So I I have to admit, obviously, we say "a." I've Sorry, what's that? Yeah, I've you caught have. you saying it sometimes on, on more than one occasion. <laughs> um, <laughs> just so that people know, 
this is not something that goes up bigger, but I'm going to bring, because I have this on the list. Um, the, the word Canuck is a slang term for Canadian. It actually is. It's, it's not nearly used as much as it was back, um, I don't say mid-century, last, last century, mid-20th, uh, maybe before, certainly a little after. Uh, we even had a comic book um, called Captain Canuck. And I thought it was going to be big. It was going to be huge. I met, I met the author. Is that like uh, Captain Kangaroo here in the States? <laughs> Sorry. No, Captain Canuck is basically Mr. <laughs> I was going to say Mr. America. No, uh, Captain America, except he's Captain Canuck. Same idea, except he didn't have super serum. Uh, I'm not sure what made him super powerful. I, I actually had the original uh, first edition comic signed in front of me by the actual creator of the comic. No idea why I let that go, because the fact of the matter is there was only about three or five episodes or something like that, or editions, and probably not more than 50,000 ever printed. <laughs> I don't know the numbers, but they were low, obviously. It didn't go over. Um, but as collectors, it would be worth a little something now if you had an original signed first edition. It was literally handed to me by the the uh creator um so but i i bring that up because if you are a hockey fan at least an nhl hockey fan you are familiar with the the vancouver canucks the vancouver canucks were the third fourth pardon me that makes me sound like an idiot the fourth canadian nhl team but at the time they would have been the third because the fourth one was defunct the ottawa senators the original senators uh weren't around very long so in the modern nhl era the Canucks were the third behind the Canadians and the Maple Leafs. So why would they call themselves anything other than a Canadian name? That's why they're the Canucks. Just so everybody knows that one. Yeah, I, um, and I, until I looked at this, I did not know that Canuck was a slang term for Canadian. Yeah, it was amazing. Some people don't know that. Uh, there are Americans who do, and they say all those crazy Canucks. But they don't really know why they're saying it. They just figure it's a slang term and there's no meaning to it. There is a story behind it. I don't really honestly know it. I don't think most Canadians do. I just know that it's something that we've used. It's kind of like Yankee. What is a Yankee, right? Technically speaking, originally a Yankee wasn't in the American. But most Canadians, and I'm guessing most Americans don't know that either. Because uh, Yankees were only in the North at one point. Is that, is that not correct? Oh yeah, that's why you're you're only a Yankee if you live above the Mason Dixon line. Yeah, except that that's not technically well. I mean, it may technically be correct, but outside of America, anyways, everyone's either a Yankee or if you're south of the border, a Gringo, uh, <laughs> non Mexican. By the yeah, way, that's for yeah. Anyone, it, in, for in the states, we consider a Yankee above Mason Dixon line. Below yeah, Mason for anyone Dixon. who doesn't understand Mexico, by the way. Uh, gringo isn't technically a racist term. It just means you're not Mexican, period. It, it's really, I mean, it's kind of a dirty way to say it, but they don't really mean anything. They just, say, you just call you gringo because you're not from here. Uh, and so gringo. <laughs> uh, but we're not talking about Mexico. Uh, now, there's some other ones in here that I don't even really understand myself because they haven't been said since the 80s or earlier. Uh, clicks, by the way, you know what a click is? Uh, when I saw that, the only thing that comes to mind is a clicker. In the, <laughs> no, I thought you were going to say something like Shawn Michaels and Diesel and, and, and no, and, and, no, and, and, and the click in the WWE. No, not that kind of click. Not not your buddies. Click is is just a weird way. I don't know why they decided to say click. I guess because it fit in. It's just short for, for slang for kilometers. So if somebody says, "Oh yeah, we're fifty clicks uh, out, fifty kilometers." But the thing is, I believe it, it probably came up from military because they would just try to be quick. And all militaries around the world basically use kilometers when not over yeah, yeah, American yeah. soil or air because it's universal. Uh, all airlines use nautical miles, but ground speed is in clicks or kilometers, right? Um, well, now that you say that, you know, you do see um, a lot of movies that are made that the like military movies where they refer to the distance as it's two clicks. So that makes sense now. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, you might want to look that up because uh, I'm, I'm about to get into another one in a second. And then maybe you can jump in if you want to look it up at all, if you have a minute. Um, 
as to how many clicks there are in a mile. I think it's, oh, I don't remember, to be honest. It's like 1.4 or 1.7 or something along that line. It's kind of similar to what you'd see in leaders versus versus uh, courts versus, you know, like a, a gallon. Like we don't have a gallon of anything. So we'll just do four liters, which would be close to a gallon, but not quite. So one mile is 1.6 kilometers or clicks. 1.6. Okay, there you go. So a click is equal to 0.62 miles. Right. Okay. So a little bit more than 50%. Um, so if I go yeah. two kilometers, I've gone uh, over a mile by quite a bit, but not quite a mile and a half. So yeah. that, that, that gives you an idea of how that is. Now, interestingly enough, if, have you heard the term hoser other than looking at the, the list today? Uh, I used to say it all the time in high school. <laughs> uh, now, was it because of of, of uh, um, SCTV? No, there was actually, and I can't remember the name of this band for the life of me, but there was a Canadian band that had a song about the Great White North, and one of their lines in it was about a hoser. And I and it was a funny as hell. Let me, let me, and I used to I used I used to love it. It was funny. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That is technically kind of from SCTV because both of those characters were invented for SCTV, and they came up with the song, and they got Getty Lee to sing the song for them. At least the high parts of the song. Take off to the Great White North. Take off. It's a beauty way to go. You remember, that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah I believe so, yeah, yes. Exactly. Usually I listen to that every Christmas along with the 12 Days of Christmas that they also did on that same Christmas album. Bob and Doug McKenzie is what you're talking about. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I couldn't remember it for the life. I just remember it. It, it was a funny song and we used to, we used to laugh about off, it. Eh? He's, he's such a hoser. Yeah. Take off, eh? uh, yeah, exactly. In here. <laughs> In this list, it's got yes, yes. poser is an unsophisticated person. And most people will say that when they don't know. A hoser isn't necessarily an unsophisticated person. A hoser can be a perfectly sophisticated person. If you're basically a jack off, <laughs> a jerk, a goof, or whatever, you're a hoser. Yeah. You don't yeah, have that's to. what I always that's what I always and to, that's what I always thought the you know the slang was for is like asshat. Yeah, basically, yeah, that's a better way to put yeah. it. Um, ass hat, uh, uh, you know, it, it, something like that. It, it just means yeah. you're not necessarily the worst, but you sure as hell ain't on my list right now, right? And you're just <laughs> acting like you're just acting yeah. like it at the moment. Yeah. So you could be a hoser, or you could be acting like a hoser, uh, and it yes. could be a horrible thing, or or just just a, a small insult. So it, it doesn't, <laughs> yeah, stretch the imagination. Uh, <laughs> getting Where is just on my computer while I'm doing this, and then it's like, okay. Anywho, um, uh, I, okay. Have you ever heard Keener? K E E. No, that one I've never heard. But yeah, I'm gonna start have all... using it because I like that it's a bootlicker. I'm gonna start using you, Keener. Oh, you well, actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I have heard it, but I believe this is so old <laughs> that no Canadian says it anymore. It's kind of like saying Nido and Keen. I mean, like, you just don't do that. Like, even in the late 70s, if you said neat, oh, you got beat up in the schoolyard. Um, if you were that age, I was. <laughs> so, uh, oh, the, you know what? This is where this person, uh, the video I saw, I think they were looking at this list and they copied it because they did it in the same order. They call this. Oh, really? Muscle. That's funny. Uh, the pot belly. Molson is a Canadian brand of beer. Molson is not only not the only, not only not the only beer we drink, but over the last 15 or 20 years or so, Molson is probably the least drank beer by anyone who has taste buds. So, um, again, I'm not trying to rag down on Molson. When I was younger, I drank myself some Molson, just not Molson Canadian, because it tastes like water with a little beer added to it. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> it's just it's the way it is. Canadians were, for years, we always bragged our beer stronger than American beer. So why drink the weaker stuff? Um, <laughs> that's my my thing. I, I don't know. Yeah, I never knew that people considered for sure a Canadian slang. I just thought that was 
something people said, but well, I guess it makes sense why they go for that, sure. Eh? <laughs> that, well, that's because that is one of the Canadian things that it still gets said. It just doesn't have the same accent and, and quite the same inflection as it used to be. Cause we used to say for sure, like there was totally a Canadian accent in it. It'd be uh, so, like, you'd say, Oh, are you going to go to the game today? It'd be like, for sure. For sure. Eh? <laughs> you know, you're going to go get, are you going to go pick up a two, four for sure? Eh? Yeah. And, and so that is a Canadian thing. That was very Canadian. And it was huge in the eighties and nineties. No, obviously <laughs> before that, uh, it just means definitely, or for certain, you know, um, but people will still say, Oh, for sure. But <laughs> that, like, that's how you say it now. Pretty much the same thing. Anybody in the Midwest in America would say. Yeah. I say for sure all the time. Yeah. You just probably never said it for sure. Eh? <laughs> no, uh, not followed by a, but I'm going to start. I'm going to start. Yeah. And as for this one here to be on pogey, meaning to be on welfare. And never in my life have I heard that. Most people just say I, I, I'm on welfare. Or he's on welfare. Or she's on welfare. And in all honesty, if you don't know somebody personally on welfare at the moment, uh, uh, you don't really talk about it a lot. Right. Why would no. you even say it? You know, it's like, right. unless you want to be a jerk off and, and make fun of people who are on it. Because some people do need it. And and then you'd I be a hoser. You. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you make fun of somebody, you're just being a hoser, eh? <laughs> For sure, eh? <laughs> okay. Uh, we won't even get into the other stuff. This is obvious. Mickey's is just a, a 375 milliliter or 13 ounce bottle of liquor. You guys have small liquor bottles too. I don't even know what you call it. You know, the little, the small ones that are, have that concave shape that you can grab. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it is. I think it might be a, is it a, no, it's not a pint. It's like, it'd be only like a half a pint or a quarter of a, a pint. Fifth? Or What's a fifth? It could be know. a fifth. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's small. It's something that of a heavy drinker can just down that in a couple of, a couple of gulps and it's gone. I mean, it's 13 ounces of, of whatever it is, which might sound like a lot, but depending on what it is, maybe not, right? Uh, two, four being a 24 bottles of beer or 24 cans of beer in this day and age. So, um, and no, we do actually say arse and bum, but mostly older people. Otherwise you're an ass, an ass hat, like you said, <laughs> uh, or you're a bum on the street, or this is, you, you have an ass or a bum, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I say arse, I say arse all the time. But hey, just so you, uh, you know, a, uh, a fifth is 750 milliliters. 750 and this was uh oh yeah okay so this is half that's half that half a fifth then so i don't know i guess you must have a half a fifth or whatever you would call it there i would assume uh, yes it can't be a canadian thing only a small bottle of whiskey or whatever because i've seen it in movies where a guy has it in a bag and he's you know and it's like a flat looking bottle you know what i'm talking about right yeah see half a fifth of liquor Yeah. Why does it say app is not focused? Because <laughs> it's not your main tab. Uh, it's the only tab I have. <laughs> it's, it's, go figure. Yeah, not clicked on it. So I, I yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a big drinker, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, well, I'm not a drinker at all, so uh, we'll move on. Um, okay, this is this is really important. Canadians don't eat back bacon, and here's why. There's no such bloody thing. <laughs> I didn't. I never even heard of that until I saw that. There I don't even know what that is. Back bacon, but back bacon is actually side bacon, not back bacon, because it comes more from the side than the back, although slightly off of it. It's but what's the difference hard. between a Canadian bacon and American bacon? Aren't they both made from pigs? Back bacon is supposed to be Canadian bacon, but I'm just but I'm just getting into that. The it's not very far from where you find the strip bacon part. It's just that it's a, 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 a off a different level where it doesn't have the fat veins going through it. So it's not the same. So what you actually are getting in reality is freaking ham. Yes, Canadians will eat it, but no, it's not <laughs> our thing. Bacon, just like you guys eat, strip bacon is still the bomb. I want bacon and eggs. If I decide I want to have a piece of ham with it, we call it pea meal bacon or pea meal ham. It's just that same slice we talked about rolled in, in, in pea meal. 
which is actually kind of tasty when it's fried up. Uh, but it's still not bacon. <laughs> so if I come up and visit and someone says, uh, would you like to order? And I say, oh, for sure, eh? Uh, give me some back bacon, eh? They'll say, what the hell are you talking about? Hey, well, no, they won't say what the hell you're talking about, but they know you're American. Because you would never say it like that. You started out good. I wouldn't uh, say yeah, it anyway. Yeah, 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 I would yeah, say, give yeah, me some bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, have some, I have some eggs and pea meal, eh? <laughs> good day. I'll have some... <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, if you do it, if you do it right, you might make him think that you're from the Maritimes, you know, Newfoundland or, or oh. something like that. But <clears throat> anywho, uh, I have absolutely no idea why we have an icing sugar listed as powdered sugar or, or vice versa. Do you guys not yeah. call it icing sugar there at all? No, I've never heard icing really? sugar. Wow, that's no. crazy. Because what do you make icing with? Or frosting, if you want to call it that, because you do have icing, right? It depends. Well, on I go to the I go to the store and buy those Pillsbury containers that I just scoop oh. it out and. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll make icing. Always, those those ones are always called frosting, uh, but icing frosting is the same damn thing, and it's yeah. always uh -huh. made with powdered sugar, uh, which is right. Which is yes, I, I do know that. I do know that. So, um, now I guess you guys actually do call it. Powdered non dairy creamer. That sounds very unappetizing. <laughs> powdered crap you put in coffee because you're too lazy to buy milk. You know what I'm talking okay, about. Okay, so first off, I, I I don't know that I've ever heard that. I do drink coffee, but again, I don't use non dairy. Yeah, neither. I, I don't. Neither, neither do I. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Right. We I just a, say I want some creamer. Yeah, we yeah well, creamer makes sense. Non dairy creamer, or you just say creamer. Uh, we call it whitener for some reason. We will say creamer. People will say that here. But it's yeah. known as whitener. It even say that on the packaging. It's, it, I don't even know why, to be honest, this is on the list. Because you'd have to be an idiot to not understand it if you're actually in the grocery store and see the product. It would be pretty obvious one way or the other uh, okay. what it was. Um, now, the interesting thing is, is I've been wrong for years. As it turns out, I thought American cheese was virtually any cheese that was basically made in America but not made in a European fashion. It turns out American cheese is cheese slices. I did not know that. So even if I'm eating Canadian cheese slices, it's technically American cheese, but made in Canada. Uh, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that either. That's, 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 that's totally new to me. We call it processed cheese. So what? Yeah, I just I just assumed American cheese was a you know a non sharp type cheese. It was you know processed differently than like yeah, the, the interesting if I got a piece is, of cheddar cheese or something. You know, yeah. The, the interesting thing about the processing is it doesn't make it any less cheese. It's just that there's actually less cheese in the slice. It, it's hard to explain. There's a certain <laughs> chemical process they put in it, which is completely safe, totally edible. No, no nothing carcinogen. Carcin you want to help me out here? Carcin Carcinogenic. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing like that. But what it does do is it allows it to be softer and melt easily. So it can easily ah, be sliced yes. thin and melt easily and so on and so on. And this is what it is. So it's still pure cheddar or pure white cheddar or pure whatever it is they're making it out of, right? Um, okay, no, there's no way. Are you guys serious? Or is this, is this list that stupid? Do you guys actually I, say candy bar and never use the term chocolate bar ever? I've never used the term chocolate bar. I've always really? said candy bar. But what if it's made out of chocolate and not candy? Chocolate is candy. Candy. But no, actually, it's not. Uh, and I, mean, I it's know in this. A bar as and, and, you, and you unwrap it, it's candy. It used to be a chocolatier <laughs> or a chocolatier. I used to mix chocolate. That's what I did. Chocolate is not candy. And unbeknownst to most people, there is way less sugar in chocolate than people think. There's way more sugar in anything. The reason why chocolate seems to be so fattening is uh, partly because of cocoa butter, but, but mostly because if people like chocolate and they get addicted to it like me, you eat way more chocolate than you would um, hard candies. Like you could suck on three or four hard candies and go, okay, I'm done, right? Even if you have a sweet tooth. Uh, but you eat chocolate bar and you're like, 
you got a little extra weight on you and it's a pandemic. <laughs> you, eat, you eat several of them in a couple of days and it adds I, up. I've never said, give me a chocolate bar ever. It's always a candy bar. Wow. And they'll say, what kind of candy bar do you want? I'll say, oh, give me a, a, a Hershey's or okay. give me a Snickers. Oh, they, well, yeah. If, if, you, if you're looking at something specific, of course, you know, like for instance, uh, if I want a Hershey, it better not have no damn nuts in it. I just want my normal Hershey. <laughs> Which, by the I way, I want to know do you, you guys actually call your milk? Eat. Sorry? I want to know do you guys actually call your whole milk homo milk? Oh, I was just about to get to that. But you know what? I'm going to put you on hold on that one for a second because I really <laughs> want to know why in the heck this list thinks that Canadians only say brown bread as opposed to whole wheat bread. There's actually a difference. Brown bread can be 60% or even 30%. If I want brown bread, I'm going to ask for 60%, which basically has a slightly um, more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, there's a little more flavor in the bread than white bread, but it doesn't mm. taste like whole wheat. So it's kind of like a cross between. So you can give your kids more healthy bread without forcing them into whole wheat bread. But for some reason, this list has it listed as whole wheat in America, brown in Canada. It's I've never heard the term bread. brown bread ever. That's because it's not called that here either. <laughs> like you go <laughs> to the store right now and it'll actually say whole wheat bread. And you, of course, will, but as I said, find 60% whole wheat bread too. But um, nonetheless, moving on to the milk. <laughs> It's a slang term. Oh, I get it slang, but it, it means is it a popular I, slang. It means fully whole homogenized. Right. As in whole milk. It actually says whole milk on the packaging. It just happens to be that we call it because it'll say homogenized in big letters, which is kind of dumb because all milk is homogenized or it's not getting sold. Right. Um, but it's not it's not skimmed. I mean, it is technically skimmed because if it wasn't, you'd have cream, right? Or at least it'd be closer right. to cream. Um, but it's, it, uh, you've you then got your 3%, your 2%, and your 1%. Uh, let me, re no, that's not true. Uh, whole milk, 3%, 2%, water percent. <laughs> well, sorry, just 1%. It tastes like water. Yeah. So, uh, well, we have, have zero percent. Too, so. <laughs> It's not as fat thing as fat. well. I gotta tell you something. When your kids are growing up, um, they should be drinking some milk, and two percent is better than one percent for that. Oh, well, it's for me then. Well, how often do you drink it? Oh, I, I might have a little bit, you know, like maybe a glass every three weeks. I said, then why the hell do you drink one percent? You can get fat from drinking one glass of milk every three weeks. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. It really does yeah. not. So yeah, my grandkids do whole milk. Um, I I'll, I'll do 2% um, just because I like the consistency of 2%. I like the way it tastes, but you know. All right. You know what? Okay. I'm going to skip a couple of these because some of these are really dumb. Really, really dumb. Um, let's go into academia here. Sorry for me looking down here, but I got I to I gotta, I gotta be able to see this with my old man face. So if you're taking a test without looking at the list yourself, <laughs> um sorry well i guess i will say it that way you're in school and there's a test being given out how do you describe partaking in the test taking the a test as possible taking a test yeah i don't according to according to this list canadians only say write a test why the hell would i say that if i wasn't writing though not every <laughs> test is a written test um yeah I, I yeah I, I don't know i just it's always just taking a test i don't uh, what the heck is to proctor an exam oh so you don't know what proctoring an exam is i actually don't. so okay so <laughs> when you have a proctor so for example they did this a lot during covid where um because my uh stepdaughter when she was still finishing her um master's she would have to get into a room like a, that had nothing in it. You get right. on your webcam and you had to do all this different stuff to your computer to make sure, you know, it wasn't like you weren't cheating. And there was a 
proctor on the other end watching you take the test oh so that's okay. proctoring a test so uh i may butcher this word in the canadian term apparently is invigilate an exam <laughs> not sure yeah. why they wouldn't just use the same term um yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't i've never heard the word invigilate in my life so Neither uh, I. uh tutorial versus recitation let's not even go there because okay i've never, I've never heard, heard of recitation. anyone i yeah i was just gonna say I, I'm, I'm going on youtube because i want to check out some recitations <laughs> or recitation <laughs> yeah. or whatever <laughs> checking out some youtube recitations yeah. I don't uh, know. I've never heard that word in my entire life, so I don't. I don't even know what that means. Okay. Now there's another misconception in here. And this is why I don't like these lists. Um, somebody will read this and say, "Oh, this is how I'm supposed to talk if I'm Canadian." Um, it says marking a test versus grading a test. Guess I, th those are not the same thing. Um, if you're grading a test, you're actually grading a test. If you're marking a test, you're you know what you do. Uh, if you're teaching fifth graders or sixth graders, you mark the test. Right. If and you show if, them, here's here's this, here's exams, that, here's this, here's what, yeah, final yeah, exams yeah. in sixth grade, final exams in seventh grade, anything from eighth grade and up, you have to grade the exams. You can't mark them. Uh, you can yeah, mark. And you don't. You don't mark, mark what's wrong. Yeah, exactly. You mark a test, but you have to grade an exam. If you don't grade it, yeah. then you're doing nothing for the student whatsoever. So there, yeah. th that's that's not a thing. Marking a test is not the same as grading a test. And usually you don't grade a test. You grade an exam, you mark a test. It's true, right? <laughs> In reality. Because, I mean, if, if the test is, is meant for an exam, it's an exam. An exam right. test, maybe, but it's an exam. Uh, it might get ridiculous. Public school versus elementary school. This is not right. This is incorrect. I yeah. don't know how many times I've heard people in America say, what the hell is elementary school? It's uh, but see, that doesn't make sense because I, I mean, that's all I've ever referred to it as middle, I elementary, know, right? middle school, high but school. I, that's, I've heard of some yeah. people. They're making it sound like, uh, like Canadians don't know it and they only say public school. I, public school is any school that is a public school. It's not right. You have, like, you have it's elementary the, in public and Jewish, private. It's not the Jewish or uh, what do you call it? School board or the Catholic school board or, or a Muslim school board or whatever. It's, yeah. it's, it's just a public school. So you're in public school and it could be anywhere from kindergarten or even nursery. I don't know if you guys have nursery there, by the way, I'm assuming you do, but I don't know if it's part of your school system, depending on the region. Um, it's sometimes yeah, it's it, part of the school system and in other regions, it's not, you have to pay for it separately. Yeah. So. It's not. Yeah. The, the, you don't. Yeah. It's first grade well, is technically yeah. or preschool is technically the first like. Yeah. Ner well, school. nursery is basically like a preschool. And, but is okay. it, it, it's the structure to, to mainly take care of the kids and kind of sort of teach them what kindergarten is going to be about. And, and so see, we would call nursery then daycare. Yeah, what well, it is. Most of the time it is here. Not, every, not, in every, not everywhere is there a nursery. Yeah. It's not everywhere. Um, some school, like it was popular in the 70s more than it is now. Uh, supply teacher versus substitute. I have never in my life tried to get up and irritate the supply teacher. I have shot spitballs yeah, at, at the substitute. I've never yeah. in my life seen a supply teacher, unless it was the guy who actually operated the supply room at school. Right. And he was asked to step in to watch us for an hour, yeah. uh, which has yeah, happened. I, I never heard that um, either. <laughs> community college versus college. This is, again, where do they come up with this crap? Community college it's community college, no matter where you are in the world. It means yeah. it may be accredited, but it's not attached to a university or a major college. Now, that's the biggest thing in difference. Americans always say, I'm going to college. You don't hear them say, I'm going to university. Right. They might be going to university, but they always say, I'm going to college. But here's right. the thing. Whether you're in America or in the States, in order to go into college, this particular college uh, for a law degree, that college is part of a university. That's just true. 
<laughs> right? Yeah, um, I've, I've never referred like, to it as university. I, I you, To me, you went, when you go to college, you could go to, oh, are you going to community college or are you going to a four-year college? And we always refer, well, I, at least I've always heard exactly. it as a four-year college. Where did you Where did you go, uh, to, if you don't mind my asking? I didn't go to college. Uh, well, neither did I. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Well, I mean, you know what? I did community college stuff a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. I took some broadcasting. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, if you I did, had, course, I did some correspondence. Did you have your eye on a specific college when you were younger? No. I, 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 to be honest with you, I struggled in certain areas of school, and I just couldn't wait to get out of school. And I was like, I'm not going back to school. So oh, I'm not going okay. to college. So I'm gonna I'm gonna learn, younger, learn a trade. I wanted to learn a trade. Yeah, yeah. But that makes sense. But that yeah, but that didn't yeah, I, I, I never I didn't I did not have a divine path. And I, I that was a huge mistake. Anybody young that's listening to this, go to school, find your path and follow it. Don't just wander because it takes you nowhere. Yeah, no, and I agree with that a hundred percent. Um and you know what? Depending on what you're doing, it doesn't always mean you have to go in for a four year program. If no, you know exactly no. what you want to do, like for instance, you want to be an actor or in broadcasting, there are courses in accredited colleges all over North America that you can go to and, and you can learn everything you need to know. There are uh, arts, schools for the arts, uh, if you want to get into that kind of thing. And it doesn't always have to be Juilliard. You know, <laughs> not everybody's good enough to get into Juilliard, but there are programs in Montreal, Toronto, New York, uh, Dallas, Los Angeles, Chicago. Probably, I'm guessing there's something either in or near Nashville that would also be probably good. I mean, you got so many, so much, such a music scene out there is most likely you would. Well, Belmont, Belmont is a pretty uh, renowned school for, for the arts. Yeah. See, that's exactly what I mean. Um, so there's, there's always those opportunities and some people are like, oh, I'm going to take a gap year. Take your gap year. If you've got the money or somebody can help you out, do it, but make a plan, make a plan when your gap year's over. Uh, if you don't feel like you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or something that requires you to do a four-year accreditation, then then go to a community college or take a course in a specific thing. Get into a trade that doesn't necessarily mean 10 years uh, to get into it, but do something and have something to fall back on. And you can do well, all that. Actually, things. you know, there's been such a big push for four-year colleges that um, if people just do it because they think they have to do it, there's actually the workforce in the tradesmen's fields, you know, electricians and plumbers and welders is they're hurting. They don't have a lot of workers. So yeah, there's and, been a big some, push like Yeah. Yeah. They make good money. Well, my too. son that lives in my son that lives <laughs> in New Orleans, uh, Anthony, um, he went to school, was in college for a semester. And he's like, Dad, I, I, I don't, I don't want to do this. I, I don't, I don't like this. I said, Son, you don't have to go to four year school. I said, But what you have to be is self dependent. So you have to learn a trade that is good enough to support you financially, that you can live on your own and be a productive member of uh, the American society. <laughs> yeah. And so he actually went and um, did a. Um, apprenticeship under his uncle as a welder became a very oh, good welder yeah, no, welding no. on you know oil rigs and stuff like that making 35 45 dollars right. an hour yeah and that's it those are things that are and you know what there are opportunities like that in canada too we say oh well, i have to go to the states for that no you don't you just have to go to alberta yeah <laughs> or bc <laughs> uh, you know get into the fishing yeah. if you want do some of the uh atlanta or uh, pacific fishing or uh, you know because at certain seasonal times, they need people. Uh, you can apprentice, uh, get on a ship, uh, go for a couple of seasons, and make massive amounts of money. Go home and decide, yeah. okay, well, I'm going to take a course in something else now and, 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 and do something else. Uh, again, this is not something for everybody. But we segue back out of that because we segued into it. It just seemed like a perfect time to make sure that people yeah. who have, might be watching or are younger plan. Have a plan. Doesn't have to be a rock solid plan, but you got to have something to to go on. Yeah, it's trade school, that. community um, college, four year university. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just you know, pick what you exactly. want to do. Try to find out what you want to pursue oh. and pursue it, regardless of what yeah. path it takes you to. to and then remember it. to pursue whether you need to say Z or Z. 
How was that for a segue? <laughs> Zedders, okay, listen, if anybody wonders, of course, we say in Canada, we say Zed simply because we do speak closer to what would be the Queen's English, right? Uh, actual British English, except without the accent. We spell our words the same way. We pronounce things for the most part the same way without the English accent. So Zed is how it's said. So that's why when I say I've got a, I had a Nikon Z62, and I wanted to get a Nikon Z9. People say, do not you mean a Z9? I said, yeah, if I'm in America, but it's also, by the way, Nikon, <laughs> not Nikon. <laughs> but that's another story. Let's not get into that. That has nothing to do with America. It is it does most of the world. Uh, yeah, well, I never heard Z until you said it. I had no idea. You know, you know what, just for, just for giggles, I won't say the first word. Um, I, I'm going to actually tell you how you're supposed to pronounce uh, what people say is Hyundai or Hyundai or Hyundai or whatever. It's actually Hyundai. Okay. <laughs> Just in case anyone <laughs> yeah. having an Elantra or a Sonata or whatever. You know, you know, you know Hyundai. how I say Hyundai, 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 Hyundai. You know how I say it? POS. That's what I say. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Yes, you you know exactly, I, and I'm sure every one of but, our viewers knows what however my car runs beautifully i bought it already four <laughs> years used and i've had it for a year and it runs like it's brand freaking new doesn't have a speck of rust on it so uh um so, so I, my, 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 my i would put my car on the track and beat yours <laughs> Mr. Found on Road. Well, uh, yes, because mine's a, a, a mild well, 180 reverse. horsepower hybrid that can barely me, beat I itself. I don't even have 180 horsepower, but I can still beat your car. Anyways, okay. I, I should say I Found on Road Dead, I mentioned, but if you reverse that, it's driver returned on foot. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I've hey, been, listen. I've been a very you know successful. What? Ford owner, thank you very much. I've had I've many very Fords. successful Hyundai owner. So there you go. Fantastic. Right. But I can tell you from my years of experience of working in a dealership when Hyundai's first came out. Oh, they were terrible. They were absolute 100 percent garbage. Dude, and it's and I have PTSD from it, and I I could yeah, never own listen, Hyundai. Hyundai and Kia were the laughing stock. I mean, come on, there's episodes of The Simpson where they say, Oh, he's driving a Hyundai. Yeah. Hyundai. You know, and other Garbage. movies and stuff, but it, it really 2013 was was the first time that people went. I don't know, maybe 2014 totally changed the game. Kia actually grabbed um, well, oh, I can't remember his name, Schreiber, I think. He he was the guy who designed BMW for like 15 years, or something like yeah, that. I don't I don't know. Um, and and so he was he was award winning, world renowned, that like considered the best automobile uh, designer. Uh, and they snagged him up, and wow, what a difference! And in the meantime, a Hyundai was paying millions, hundreds, and hundreds of millions of dollars in R and D to come up with their own designs for engine. And uh, after a few failures, which we all know about now, um, they came up with much better designs. And so they've actually redesigned the CVT transmission, and now call an IVT. It uses a chain. And it, 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 I can tell you, after a year driving it, it's way more reliable, way better shifting, way faster to grab the power you need, and way quicker to shift back down. It makes everything work better. So they've done a marvelous job. And keep in mind, I have a 2018. If you have something that's newer, it's going to be even better. So CBTs anyway. don't shift. What's that? CBTs don't shift. You don't think they shift? Of course they shift. It's continuous shifting. It's not, it's not instantaneous shift. And, and, and yes, you can do it in manual in a manual it's mode. It's not a shift. Shifting is going from one gear to another. Yeah. And they and don't shift. They don't go from one gear. You're, they, you're right. They have expansion contraction that changes the ratios. It's not a shift. Variable transmission. But here's what it feels like when you do the, continu the continuous variable transmission manual shift. It feels like you're driving. Not a, D, a, a DCT. You know what that is, right? 
you can't manual shift dual clutch constant transmission. velocity transmission. Because it changes so fast that it reacts almost as quick as a dual clutch transmission, which means you actually feel that jolt when you want to get that down a gear or two and get that extra acceleration. Okay. The, the, this is a conversation for another that. podcast. It is. <laughs> it is. It totally, we're going completely off the cuff on this. Yeah. One. Uh, yeah. I, I, it's, you yeah. know what? Maybe it's a Canadian versus American thing. Canadians like Hyundai's and yeah. Americans are going to stick with their found on road deads. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, let's, let's, skip, on. let's skip the rest of this because we don't have as much time left as I originally wanted. And I just accidentally closed my, my application uh, when I'm actually trying to get into the other thing we were talking about or we wanted to talk about, and we're going to have less time to do it, unfortunately, um, is Canadian artists that have infiltrated, if you will, uh, American uh, media uh, in all aspects, really, uh, from uh, plays, movies, television, uh, music, everything. Um, so I'm actually just looking at a page that I think you sent me the page. Um, so, you know, just mentioning a few names right off the bat. Uh, Elliot Page, uh, for instance, if anybody remembers before he transitioned, um, was known by another name. I'm not going to dead name anybody on the air. So, um, but uh, I, had, he, I had no idea of that. Uh, that yeah, was news well, to me. He, he, he was uh, in uh, the movie Juno. Uh, playing right. a, a female, the pregnant female at the time, of course. So we'll move on from that just to keep anybody from getting all politically blah. blah, blah. I'm just saying I'm not dead naming anybody. Um, James Cameron. Everybody knows who James Cameron is. How many Everybody people, knows James Cameron. How many I did not know he was Canadian. Know he was Canadian. Who is, well, I'm sure there's a lot to do, but I did not know he was Canadian. Okay. So of the most successful directors of all time, would you say he was in the top five? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Considering Avatar. Yeah, uh, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. The Abyss, Aliens, Titanic. I mean, you know, if a movie is directed by, by him, it's going to be a good movie. Uh, most of the time. <laughs> I would bank my money on that, yeah. But also yeah. going to be a blockbuster that's going to make a lot of money, too. And have very good actors. And that's, that's the key to it. Um, he always makes sure that there are excellent actors in his movies. But yeah, that's, that's another Canadian. Um, this is another one that not as many people are, are aware of unless they're familiar with the show True Blood, which at one time was pretty popular. But a lot of people who didn't see it don't really know as much about it right now. But Anna Paquin uh, is another Canadian who, to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure she was born in Winnipeg. They moved to New Zealand and then they just ended up in America. So her Canadian connection is really that she was born here. So I don't know why there's much to break about there, other than she does have family in, in Winnipeg. And, and I, uh, you know what? What the heck? I'll actually hold this right up to the camera. We don't even have to even, need I say more? Whether you yeah, like no, her or I, not. And I did know she, she was Canadian. One yeah, of the it's, biggest it's superstars well in the history of the music industry. She's up yes. there with Cher. Like, oh, yeah, literally. Sure. Cher knows her name just as much as she knows Cher's name. Cher may be the original diva, but this woman was second. So, yeah. Well, maybe not second. The, the, that other woman, I can't remember her name. <laughs> one with the beautiful voice. Um, big hits in the 80s and 90s. Unfortunately, passed away. <laughs> can't remember her name. Uh, but she's not Canadian. You're talking about Whitney Houston? Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Whitney, uh, yeah, Whitney would have Houston. been the second real diva. Right, like yeah. actual diva, diva, uh, and she would have been much more of a diva had she unfortunately not passed, or if, had, if she hadn't passed away. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I have. I was gonna say Avril Lavigne, who as is on the list. Everybody's heard of Avril, Avril Lavigne. She was massive in the nineties, huge, huge. And Chad Kroger, oh Nickelback. I like Nickelback. I, you know, funny thing is, is I don't mind their music that much. I'm not really a fan, but I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as people make out to be. It just seems <laughs> they expect people to go Nickelback. It's like they're supposed to hate them automatically. <laughs> but yet these guys can go to an arena tomorrow and sell 18,000 tickets. Yeah, easy. So yeah, if they hate like them that bad, why? Uh, yeah. 
All right. Dan Aykroyd. Legend. Legendary. There's got to be a lot of people that may not have known originally that he was Canadian for a lot of, long time. But by now, oh, I, I knew know. he. I knew he was Canadian. I'm, I mean, Canadian. I knew for a long time. Maybe not right, right when he first came on the scene, but I, I knew he was Canadian. Yeah, he always talks about that. He's one of those Canadians that always mentions that he's Canadian. Uh, can we skip over that? And he had a little bit of an accent too. You can kind of hear it in his in his voice. A little bit, yeah. I, I'm willing to skip over the next one. I I don't mean any disrespect. I'm just okay. You know what? I shouldn't be that much of an ass hat. <laughs> I don't want to be a hoser, eh? I'm just honestly not a fan of Drake. I, I'm going to say this publicly. Yeah. I don't care. Drake ruined rap. Because if before Drake came along, everyone was rapping, you know, hip hop hip, hip, or whatever, you know, like Will Smith type stuff or, or whatever. You know, somebody with a name big in his name or something like that. Yeah, I, I, I'm Drake not a Drake came along, I just went like, blah, 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 and everything just died. Oops, I just hit a drum. <laughs> and, and and it's just monotone and it's, i'm not saying the guy isn't talented because if i had to try to have some kind of a talent competition with the guy he would beat me hands down and just about anything <laughs> so if you happen to see this drake i'm not putting you down as a human being okay or trying to say you're not talented i just would like to hear you actually use the talents that you have a little bit more diversity added into it so that said it's not my thing he probably wants to have me killed now but <laughs> he doesn't care he didn't give too much for my shit's ass anyways <laughs> uh you know I, I yeah he's from toronto by the way so um and he was on degrassi so uh, that's where he first got his first taste of fame. You've heard of Degrassi, I'm assuming. That was Degrassi. You haven't heard of it? Degrassi no. was a Canadian show. Actually, started out. Oh God, it was way back in the 80s, or was it late 70s? I can't remember. But it was the kids of Degrassi Street. And interesting enough, when I first moved to Toronto, one of the first things I did was find out where Degrassi Street actually was because I heard it was a real street. And I took how would I know about that? Cars. What? How would I know about that? If uh, well, well, hang on, that's just the beginning of it. <laughs> Let me get to it. I found Degrassi Street, realized that they filmed in the neighborhood, but definitely not on Degrassi Street. They probably never filmed on Degrassi Street. Anyways, a few years after that show ended, or a couple of years, they decided they could do a whole series around it uh, where these some of the kids, a couple of them would be older, and they would, they would give them different roles instead of the same roles, rename the characters, whatever, and put them in junior high. And they called it Jurassic Junior High. Well, not only did it work out, but it got picked up on American television in syndication. Don't remember where, uh, but it was a massive hit. So after three years, they said, well, what are we going to do now? Do we going to keep going and have a different cast? Well, they did add a few people because, you know, they went from seven to eight to nine. And then they had new seven, grade sevens and new grade eights. I said, well, we can't change everybody. Let's just take our main cast that we've had for three years including a couple of people who were different characters, but from the original show and move them into Degrassi high. So of course the vice principal or sorry, the teacher that was their homeroom teacher became their principal in the new school <laughs> and Degrassi high was born, which was a massive bigger. Hit. You've heard of it. Never heard of it. Oh, never heard of it. Uh, nope. And then after that, of course uh, they had uh, some other thing, Degrassi talks or whatever it was. And a few years later, they came up with a, the, a Degrassi, the New Year's or Degrassi, the new show or whatever it was. And it ran for, I think, I don't know if it's still running, but it, it was on for years and they would actually change it. Drake was in that newer version. So it was, uh, it, it still had tie-ins to the original because a couple of the original characters came back as the mothers, fathers, and teachers of the new students. So there's some paid mothers and or fathers and other. This isn't the grassy podcast, so let's. <laughs> I'm mentioning it because Drake. He was I know, I'm just I'm gonna, you, you, I'm gonna skip over anybody I don't recognize as being a superstar. By the way, yeah, uh, they might wanna... be famous, but if they're not a superstar, I don't really. You know what? I do want to actually mention somebody because uh, this is all uh, like most of these people are, are younger. Kirsten, Hayden Christensen is not Canadian. What? 
Are you telling me Anakin Skywalker's Canadian? How would I not know that? What are you talking about? Darth Vader is Canadian? Hayden Where do you see that? Hayden Christensen, best known as Anakin Skywalker, a.k.a. young Darth Vader in Star Wars Episode 2 and 3. Vancouver born. Oh, I, you I, skipped I, way ahead. Wow. Well, I told you I was skipping to something because they're not superstars. But you know what? You, you have... don't know Eric McCormick of Will and Grace? Bro. Wait, he's on Will and Grace? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. I, didn't, I recognize I, him. I, I read the name and I didn't, rec I didn't look at the face. No, I, you know what? I do know him, yeah. Uh, he's actually very funny. Um, <laughs> okay, that's why. I, yeah, I, I didn't follow you, yeah, but yeah, yeah okay. okay right. so, yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know um, Fair enough. your Darth uh, Vader. And as for George Strombolopoulos, does anybody outside of Canada know that guy? Other than, other than famous people, because famous people get no. interviewed by him. Famous people get interviewed by him all the time. So every famous person knows who he is. But if you're not famous, you probably don't, unless you're Canadian. Jason Reitman. That makes sense. Well, let's go back to the let's go back to the Darth Vader. I think I that's probably why I think I hear when he says, "I am your father." He follows it with a. <laughs> no, just kidding. Well, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm glad that you decided to blow your jokes so horribly because he <laughs> never said that. When I said he was Darth Vader, I I, I meant that in jest because he, he's I know. I know. <laughs> but you never hear well, his voice as Darth Vader. It was you know uh, who the voice of Darth Vader is. It was on par with your. Is she gonna call me? So. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. We're we're getting into that. Moving on, uh, Jim yeah, Carrey. Maybe. I'm not even sure. Well, Jim Carrey's obvious. Let's not even bother. Yeah, uh, Jim Carrey. He, he he's the goat, and that's all yeah. there is to it. He's uh, awesome. But going back years into music, for specifically. Um, You've heard of Bachman Turner Overdrive. God, tell me you've heard of Bachman Turner Overdrive. Okay, yes. BTO, all yeah. Canada, right? Uh, Randy Bachman, of course, was also part of the Guess Who, the original Guess Who, which were all Canadian, all from Winnipeg specifically. Um, there's uh, lots of other Canadians. We already mentioned a couple of them uh, in Celine Dion and Avril Lavigne. Uh, there's a whole bunch of Canadian groups and ba the band. Uh, I don't know if you remember Up on Krill Creek. She sends me a five speed. That's the band, Canadian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly enough, the band was formed originally as part of, uh, what was it called? Ronnie Hawkins and the something. I can't remember what the something was. And Ronnie Hawkins eventually, and he stayed in Canada for several years, selling out bars and small clubs and stuff, and eventually decided to move back down south uh, and do his country thing back down south. And these guys stayed together and said, let's just call ourselves something else. And they, and I can't remember. I think the story went is they didn't have a name officially or it was written down incorrectly. And so they just were written down as the band and said, hey, that works. And they became, they became one of the greatest rock groups of their era. <laughs> the band. Yeah. So that, that, that is very, very, very good. good. Look at Justin Bieber. Hear you. I mean. I, you know what? I tried not. I am, I'm sorry. On behalf of all of Canada, I think we could end the podcast with saying, on behalf of all of Canada, we are sorry about Biebs. That's okay, because you gave us Keanu Reeves, legend. Yeah, goddamn right. And William Shatner and Scotty. Mr. Scott James Doohan himself. Keeper Sutherland. Yeah. Yep. And Donald Sutherland, obviously. <laughs> Mark Short, <laughs> hilarious. In Love Canada. Michael Bublé. Ray Don Chung was born in, in Canada. Did not know Michael that. Michael Buble, yes, of course, obviously. And there's many others, but we're going to say thank you very much for watching, or if you were just listening, thank you very much for listening. And we're going to we're gonna uh, talk about some really fun things over the next few weeks and, and some more serious ones. So tune in again next week for uh, United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I'm Lionel McClintock in Canada and Robert from the U.S. And we'll catch you later. Have a good one.